हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू ऑप्शन गेक दिस इज योर होस्ट विवेक पार्ट टाइम ऑप्शन ट्रेडर एंड फुल टाइम वर्कर हजबेंड एंड फादर इफ यू ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू जनरेट कंसिस्टेंट मंथली इनकम ट्रेडिंग ऑप्शन वाइल वर्किंग इन योर रेगुलर डे जॉब देन ज्वाइन मी इन दिस जर्नी हेलो एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन टू ऑप्शन गेक हाउ आर यू डूइंग I think it is an understatement to say that the lives have been turned upside down in the past week with all the restrictions of shelter in place in many of the states and work from home enforcement schools being closed I think it all of us are going through an unprecedented phase at least in my lifetime I had never seen this so the first order of duty for all of us is to take care of our health and the health of our loved ones and beyond that if you still have some time maybe look at some trades learn something new so i thank you for uh, tuning in i appreciate that you are here with me spending some time while i present you with a summary for the past week that is the week from 16th of march to 20th of march 2020 what a week it had been so let's see what happened as always first we'll talk about market moving news first headline i want to talk about is markets are in the bear grip bear roars again the s&p is down approximately 32% from its recent high Last week the market were firmly in the grip of bears it was extremely volatile and it ended negative for the week generally uh, we look at the drop in the markets and say you know if it has dropped up to 20% it is correction more than that it is bear more than 30 40% it is recession and then beyond it could be depression have we reached into recession yet no but i think everybody is talking especially the talking heads on cnbc and lot more people with much bigger you know degrees than me are saying that recession is not far away we will probably end up in recession but we'll see for now we all know that the bullish sentiment has just vanished from the market even though we do see some bump up in the market whenever a favorable announcement is done but those up moves are quickly overshadowed by the pullbacks so next headline i want to talk about is that oil the rout in the oil market is not done yet for the first time since 1999 oil sinks below 20 dollars per barrel the us crude oil this was a second consecutive week when oil had been going down and down had it not been for intervention by us department of energy it probably would have been another 30% down from where it ended on friday on thursday us department of energy promised to buy a few million barrels of oil for the special purpose reserve so that caused a jump of 24% in oil prices but it it it's been brutal on the oil markets third headline i want to talk about is uh, global stimulus i think everybody knows that at least us fed and us congress is working towards the stimulus package and just hot off the press a few minutes earlier i saw a headline that in the us both the par- political parties could not agree on the stimulus package and the package is not yet signed so we'll see what happens on monday but it's not just the us fed even all the other central banks across the world are racing to provide some relief package to their citizens that includes a uh, european uh, central bank bank of england bank of canada 
all those big banks have announced relief packages for their uh, citizens and for their businesses i think everybody wants to make sure that the economy does not go deep into recession and they want to help as much as they could by what fed controls next headline is the market continue to stay extremely volatile and this volatility we had seen in um, the two weeks ago and the same volatility just continues you know 5% up or down has become a norm of the day can you imagine nobody blinks an eye if it is just 5% up or 5% down i sometimes thank my stars oh it's only 5% ah oh, that's fine we have seen the moves going up to 10% 12% on monday uh, 16th of march as S&P was down 12%. On Tuesday, it was up 6%. On Wednesday, it was down 5.2%. On Thursday, it was up half a percent. And that's the smallest move we have seen in last two or three weeks. Just half percent. On Friday, S&P fell down again 4.3%. Extremely, extremely volatile market. So, us as an Uh, investors or option traders have to be careful to know how do we trade this extreme volatility because of the extreme volatility wix is staying you know above 60 above 70 and if we have a longer term outlook we could actually make use of this high volatility to get some really really fat premium on some of the trades All right, moving on to the next one. Our next section is around the summary of how various market indices had performed last week. No surprise here; all major market indices were down. SPY was down for the week, five point four one percent. Dow Jones Index was down seven point six one percent. Technology provided some buffer, and it was down only. 0.47%. That's the least down movement of the major market indices. Uh small caps IWM was down 7.12%. And the bonds bonds are supposed to move in the opposite direction of the broad market indices, but when there is a when the market is gripped in the fear there is no rational that works so bonds were also down albeit only 0.6% only thing that was positive last week of the broad market and the bonds and the gold was gld etf that is gold it was up 1.82% only not enough but if you have at some gold position that may be the ticker that ended up green for the week but otherwise all market indices were in red bonds were in red market was in the grip of bears and this tsunami of red indices bear markets we don't know when it's going to stop we have so much uncertainty about corona virus that we just can't predict All right, moving on to our next section, trade summary review. Last week, the was the week when the mar oh, we had March twentieth, which is the third Friday of the month, which means that was our monthly expiration week. So everything that was related to March, all those positions had to be closed. And that is why you see total trades closed were eighty four. many of those 84 were original positions that we had to close for a loss if those were bullish positions many of them were the hedge trades that we closed for profit or i would say that helped us in reducing the eventual loss on the bullish trades but since it was an expiration week we had to close all those trades So overall 84 trades were closed last week out of which 52 turned out to be profitable 
and 32 were the losers and all the losers were either the naked puts or the put spreads that we had in place because markets have been so 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 down um all the bullish trades ended up in losses but we had hedged many of those trades by putting naked calls or naked uh, or call spreads and all those ended up in profits so 62% win rate did it turn the portfolio into green did we close last week in green no but it did help in reducing some of those losses the number of uh, the amount of loss was higher than the amount of profit but those hedge trades did help us overall we opened 39 new trades uh, some of them are the trades that we rolled out from march to april as a part of our trade management collecting more credit so that eventually if we have to close it for loss we will close it for a lesser loss but many of the trades are also the brand new trades the new positions that we opened i had said earlier that i had kept lot of cash aside and i markets down 35% it's too tempting for me to just sit aside do i think i am catching the bottom i don't know i have never been able to predict the market direction but I, my thought process is if not now then when i am starting to get back into market very specific bullish positions uh some of the companies that have been on my watch list but had run away from me i want to start uh, getting into those again very small positions slowly and steadily i am not great at market timing and i don't think anybody knows how to time the market some might just get lucky but i don't want to depend on luck so i will start to uh, get slowly back into the market in putting bullish positions and knowing completely being aware that market could go down further 10% 20% so i'm i will put only those positions which i am still okay to hold and would kill me if market drops another 20% okay all right so next section i want to go is our thought of the week the thought that i picked up to discuss with you for this week is you can't stop the waves but you should learn how to surf them i think this is very appropriate topic of for us to discuss based on what's been happening in the market a big tsunami waves have been hitting our portfolio left right and center we do see sometimes that uh, some of the stocks will go up or the market will go up for a day and then crashes again the next day so these big waves keep coming and hitting us many of my friends ping me say hey why not just get out of the market that's one thought or you know completely stop the markets you can't stop market from doing what it is doing only thing you can learn is how to ride these waves and we as an option traders do have the tools to ride these waves if we were just plain buy and hold stock investors unfortunately there is nothing much that you can do at this point of a time except selling them all the stocks and then hope that you will be buying it later on but there is a study uh, from goldman sachs which showed that for the last i forgot how many years they have done the study 20 or 30 years uh, or maybe 15 years if you had m- taken the money out of market um over those 15 years there were 10 days which provided the biggest gains and if you did not have the money in the market for those 10 gains your portfolio would have been up only 1/10 of what the rest of the people those who stayed invested would have gained 
because it is very difficult to time the market and to know when should I get in and when should I get out. So I have not taken any money or any um, stocks out of market. But what I have done as an option trader is to put some hedge trades. Just I can't stop the wave. But yes, I can put some hedge trade which if a wave hits me, those hedge trade will be useful for me. It may not be a smooth sailing, but it will it will save me from drowning. I think that's all uh, we all are trying to do right now. So still keep our nose above water, still keep our head above water. It's not easy, but there are tools and techniques that you can use. Okay. All right, maybe since all of us have been locked down into our homes, we have some time, maybe use this time to learn how to surf markets. And when you are able to go to beach, that time you can learn how to surf the real waves. All right. So next section I want to get into the trade analysis is I have I'm not going to discuss those a uh, trade leaderboard because I want to spend a lot more time on trade analysis, which directly ties into the topic of how we can use option trading management techniques to surf the tsunami waves. So I had started um, this particular trade. Uh, I have shared it in the previous week, but we did not complete the trade previous week. So that's why I just want to complete the chain of this trade in this week's session. So the I want the trade that I want to talk about um, is an iron condor, and because the stock moved so low, the stock ended the week at the maximum loss position but because we know how to surf these waves we still exit the exited the position at a profit yeah it seems counterintuitive if the stock was at the max loss position how can you make profit because we use a lot of option trading management techniques if i had not done anything after I had put the trade, tsunami came, hit me, and I have not done anything. I'm dead. I'm drowned. My trade would have lost the money which it, because the stock is at max loss position. But no, we have been very diligent watching each wave and trying to ride them. So let's dive into it and get into the detail of how we managed this trade and how eventually we were able to convert a losing trade into a profitable trade. Yeah. All right, so the trade I want to talk about is on ticker MELI, company Mercado Libre. I've been bullish on this ticker. So on 11th of February, I opened an iron condor trade which was slightly skewed towards bullish and the width of the iron condor was ten dollars okay. just to recall iron condor ha has four legs or it's a combination of two spreads a short put spread and a short call spread now the iron so the trace that we had was a short put spreads with a strike of 610 and 600 and the short call spread with the strikes of 720 and 730. We collected a premium of $4.42 when we initially entered into this trade on 11th of February. So as you can see here, this is the iron condor trade. This blue line is where the stock was trading at that moment when I put in the trade. So I gave myself a lot more room on the upside. Markets were bullish and I was bullish on this ticker. So I gave myself a lot more room for the stock to run upside and little less room for the downside. So the maximum profit situation for us is $442 which is the initial premium that we taken if the stock stays between 610 
N720. The stock stays between our short strikes. That is our maximum profit position. Our maximum loss position is stock goes lower than our long put means lower than $600 is our maximum loss area or stock goes higher than $730 long call is the max loss area. And the max loss in this trade is $558, $442 was the initial premium that we took, $10 is the width. So $10 subtract 442, you get 558. So $558 is my maximum loss. If I had not done anything, if I don't do anything after I open the trade. So last week when I finally closed the trade, stock was trading at, it's not even on the screen. It was somewhere way below, uh, it was trading at around $460. That means I should, when I close the trade, I should be booking a loss of $558. But as you will see in the next screen, I'll take you through the process of how did we manage the trade that we were eventually able to exit it at profit. All right. Sounds too good to be true, but it is not. It is the reality. So this is the screenshot from my trading platform which shows various trades that we did on Mercado Libre Meli starting with the initial opening trade that we did on 11th of February. So we sold this iron condor collected initial premium of $4.42. Right? When I opened this trade, stock was trading at $650. I showed you in the previous screen um, the iron condor diagram where we seen that the stock is at 650. So this is my initial opening trade. Now on 6th of March when the market started to tumble I did uh, I started managing my trade. The stock went down from 650 to 617 and what we did was to roll down our call side. So we rolled down 720 call down to 700 call. Means we closed the 720 call and we opened $700 the short strike call. When we did that, we collected $2 additional credit. Now on 11th, five days after that, stock continued to go down. Stock fell down from 617 now to 563. As you had seen on my management technique videos, we continue to roll down our call. So we had $700 short call from this trade. We closed that call and we opened a $660 call. Means we rolled down our call from 700 to 660, collected additional $3 of premium. Stock still not cooperating, continue to go down, went down to 495. We also moved in lockstep with the stock going down, we continue to roll our call down. That's on 13th, so on 12th, we rolled our call down from 660, means we closed the 660 call, down to 600 short call, opened a 600 short call, collected additional premium of $2.50. Then on 13 of March, stock rose to 511 and we did another trade, 410 short put to collect whopping $7.50 at additional premium because stock was $100 away. We were only weak away from expiration. So I thought it's a good trade to put in. Then on 16th of March, we closed down our original put spread that was being challenged because stock is at $480 approximately, almost completely in the money. 
So I did not have any hope that the stock will come back up and I just wanted to close the trade and clean up my books. So I was able to close this trade for $9.65. And stock continued to stay lower. So we rolled down our 600 short call, which was from this trade, down to 550 short call. So we again rolled down our call. These are all our hedging techniques. Collected additional credit of $225. Eventually, on 19th of March, we closed down our $410 put that we opened up here on 13th of March. Within six days, we closed down our $410 put. And only thing that we were left with with this trade was a 550 call, which expired worthless on uh, 20th because the stock was trading at 470 or something so that call expired worthless so initial trade we put bought as a credit of 442 $4.42 cents that means our max loss was $5.58 cents but we did one two three four five hedging trades to reduce the loss or to convert the losing trade into profitable trade. So if we add up all the credits, 442, 2, 3, 250, 750, 225, the total credits amount to $21.61. And if we add up all the debits, 45 cents here, 965, 250 amount to $12.60. So we were able to exit this trade eventually at a $9.07 profit. Even though the stock was at a max loss position for the initial iron condor that we put. But because we had done all these management techniques, we were still able to exit this trade for profit. Could I have done anything uh, if the stock fell down? I could not have stopped the stock. We don't control the stock. That's the wave which will come and hit us. I predicted that the stock market or this particular ticker, there will be no storm in this. It will be a smooth sailing. But what did I know? Two weeks after I put the stock, stock market crashed. And the tsunami came and hit us. Only thing that was in my hand is... How can I manage this trade now? Can I ride those waves? So I think it is very important if you want to be a serious option trader or an, not even an option trader. If you want to stay long in the markets, you must know how to fight back, how to ride these bear waves when they come and hit us. We can stop them. So only way for us to protect or to reduce our losses is, hey, let's figure out how to manage it. All right. I hope this give you some thought around, you know, learning some of these option trade management techniques so you can employ in your own portfolio and learn how to best, uh, you know, work with your portfolio. All right. With this, let's move on to our next section, which is mailbag segment, in which I answer a question posted to me by either a reader or a listener or a viewer on YouTube. So the question that I picked up was asked of me on Quora. The question was, why not suspend stock market trading for the duration of a crisis rather than sustain such across the board losses and i can understand why this person is asking the question this person probably has lot of bullish uh, positions mean stock holdings and is doesn't know what to do with them so rather than looking at your portfolio every day and seeing it's turning from amber to red to redder to blood red 
why not just stop the stock market so my answer to this uh, person was as if we are uh, we only have stocks in our portfolio all of us would wish government should intervene and stop the stock market but remember stock market can be played from both sides not just from a bullish side but from the bearish side also and there are investors or traders who would have had trades which will benefit if the stock market goes down last uh, week not this not this present um, not the week that just went by but the previous week i had those uh, positions which we completely closed i had positions in vix which were very very profitable because the stock went down it helped me cut down on my losses on my long stock positions so if i'm a stock exchange now the challenge is should i favor bullish traders or investors or should i take the sides of the bearish ones so my response is the best for the stock market is to stay neutral don't close the stock market if the market has fallen because we did not close the stock market when the stock market rose it rose 30% in 2019 we didn't close the stock market at that time all those who had bearish positions were sustaining heavy losses but we did not close it then so why should we close it now we should not so if you are in a positions wherein you are wishing that the stock market should be closed then it means either your stock positions are too big for your for the amount of capital that you have or the amount of overall portfolio that you have or your asset allocation is completely way off or you do not know how to surf the waves or fourth that the outlook your outlook for making money in the stock market is too small the time period that you're looking for is too small if you were thinking to make money in stock market in next 6 months and now you're seeing that market is down and it can no way recover in 6 months that time period outlook is too small this money should not have been in the stock market to begin with so rather than waiting or hoping that the stock market is closed it's best for us to learn how to navigate the downturns in the stock market one thing that we saw today is how to manage these option trades all those managing the manage manage uh, all the trades that i put to manage my position were all bearish in nature if somebody shuts down the stock market i cannot put those bearish trades and i would not have been able to convert my losses into profit so net net let's not hope that government intervenes and shuts down the market let's learn how to navigate these markets and remember the us markets is where the most of the trading happens across the world none of the stock markets can match the volume the liquidity and the diversity of uh, trading that happens in us market and the reason is everyone knows that the us capital markets are free markets you are free to take any sort of position bullish or bearish so if you government tries or stock exchanges start to take favor and close down when the market is going down it's a loss of trust and i think that will be much more detrimental to the overall capital markets in us than the losses that we are seeing now okay all right this brings us to the end of this week's updates as always if you have any questions you can send me a note on optiongig@gmail.com 
you can watch my videos on basics of option trading and a full series on management of option trades on YouTube. Also, if you want to pick up some other thoughts that I have on general option trading, subscribe to my podcast Option Gig. It's available on Apple iTunes, Google Podcast or whatever podcast platform that you use to listen. Okay, with this, I want to thank you again for spending time with me. Take care of yourself, your loved ones and wash those darn hands and stay away from the people that you don't know. All right, friends, goodbye and happy trading. And I'll come back to you again next week, almost same time. Bye-bye. Please note that all the information presented in is purely for educational purposes and is not a financial or investment advice. I don't know you, you don't know me, so do yourself a favor and don't invest or trade solely based on what you hear.